Good morning, options traders. And for this video, we're going to take a little deeper dive into some of the math. It's actually pretty simple. Don't let it scare you. But we're going to take a look at how to understand the Black-Scholes model with a single die. Now, I've talked about Black-Scholes and fair value in a number of videos, but I think a lot of times traders don't quite follow what it means when we say that the option has a fair value behind it. And what does that mean? Now, this video will also help to answer a recent question from one of our traders about using a straddle to gamma scalp. And you're going to find out that if you understand fair value, that the gamma scalping is still going to leave you with no profits. So we'll save that for a future video. But for right now, let's take a closer look at the Black-Scholes model by looking at a single die. So remember the concept of fair value, pretty simple. It's the price that doesn't favor the buyer or the seller. And all financial assets, really any type of a, even a casino game, anything that involves spending money with the anticipation of potentially making money has a fair value. And so it's the price that breaks even in the long run. Now, right off the bat, people sometimes think, well, that seems weird. I've always heard that sellers have the long run advantage or that buyers have the long run advantage. And that simply can't be true. If sellers always had the advantage, what would happen to option prices? People would sell them and they would continue to sell them until that price came down far enough to where it was no longer true. You cannot have a permanent equilibrium state where the options are always in the favor of a buyer or a seller. So whenever we run a Black-Scholes model, that options price that it comes up with is the fair value. And so what that means is that in the long run, you would be expected to just break even. So once again, the whole idea of the Black-Scholes model, extremely complicated. And sometimes I think that's what throws traders as they just get so lost in the concept. Well, let's make it simple. We can do exactly the same idea with a single die. Remember, Every type of a financial transaction or game has a fair value. So let's make it simple. What we're going to do is we're going to roll a single die, which means that the only outcomes we can get are one through six. Now in the Black-Scholes world, let's say if the stock is trading for 100, obviously this range is a lot bigger. So you can see that it starts to get a little muddy, but we're gonna make it simple. These are the only values we can get. And now let's pick a strike price and it doesn't matter, but let's say the $4 call. So the only time that our call option can pay off is if the die turns up a five or a six. What do we win? Well, if the face up side is a five and we've got the $4 call, it pays off a buck. If the face up side is six, it pays off two bucks. So the possible payoffs that we could have are these. We'll earn zero if the die comes up one through four, We'll earn a dollar if it turns up five, and we'll earn two dollars if it turns up six. So now we've kind of mapped out the potential rewards. And once we have this, along with the probabilities, we can figure out the fair value. So in this case, what's it worth? So in our example, the possible payoffs, again, are these. Now there's a lot of different ways we could approach how to calculate the fair value, but this is probably the simplest. This is the way that Black and Scholes approached it. And what they did is they said, let's assume that we have a winning position, that this is an in the money option. What's the average payoff? Well, the only time that we're in the money is if it's a five or a six. In other words, our payoffs are either one or two. And they're both equally likely if we're in the money. So the average payoff is right here in the middle, would be $1.50. So once again, if our call option is in the money, the average payoff is $1.50. Now we just have to say, what's the probability that we're in the money? Well, there's only two ways that we get a payoff, two ways that we're in the money out of six, which is a third. So watch this. We take a third times the average payoff of a buck 50. The fair value is 50 cents. And that's the price that wouldn't favor the buyer or the seller. So to show it, what would happen in the long run? Well, remember, these are the possible payoffs. So let's assume that the odds worked out perfectly and we're gonna play this game six times. Well, we should assume that we're going to win zero on the first roll, win nothing on the second, the third, and the fourth. On the fifth roll, we'll win a dollar, and on the sixth roll, 
will win too. Of course, it will rarely work out that perfectly in the real world, but that's what's happening on average. However, every single time you play, you must pay. Isn't that the way that options work? You have to pay to play? It's not like a casino where you lay down a bet and if you win the bet, you get your money back. You have to physically pay for it. So if we play six times, we're going to pay a total of three bucks. Now what can we expect to happen with our winnings? Well, again, on average, in these six tries, we would win a dollar one time, and on the six roll, we would win two bucks, and that would give us a total of three. But notice that the amount you won is exactly the amount you spent, and so therefore, you just broke even. So this is probably a simpler way to show it, but let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet to see it in action. So in this program, what I've done, these rows are just giving us 30 tries. The second column right here is giving us a random number from one to six. It's just rolling a die. So you can see that we're only getting one to six in this column. This column is doing a calculation to figure out the payoff. Remember, if it's one through four, we get zero. If it's a five, the option pays off a dollar. And if it's a six, as it is here, it pays off two. Everything else is zero. So you're only going to see zeros, ones, and twos in this column. So we play this 30 times. How much did we win? Well, it's just the total of this column. So right down here is the sum, 24 bucks. What did it cost us? Well, we played 30 times times 50 cents each. It cost us 15 bucks. So we won 24, we spent 15, we're up nine. Well, that's all fine and good, but let's play again. I just hit F9 for recalc. Now we only won three. Let's try it again. Now we're up two. We tried again, we're up zero, up zero. Now we're down three. Now we're down five, down five, up five, and you can see what's going to happen. There's a lot of variability, but on average, you're just winning zero. So what I've done to speed it up a little bit is to do what's called a Monte Carlo simulation over here in Excel. And I'm doing this 30 row sequence 20 times. And so it's just recording this number down here after 30 tries. So watch what happens. See, now we're down $1.25. If we hit F9, up 15 cents, down 15 cents, down 70 cents. See, we're starting to get much closer to zero. And that's because we've done this sequence of 30 20 different times. Now, if we made these rows right here, instead of 1 to 20, we made it to 1,000 or 10,000, this number right here would finally hit zero. So the thing that you have to understand to successfully trade options is don't buy a call just because you think the stock is going up or a put option just because you think the stock is going down. You have to understand what am I paying for that right? You have to consider the fair value. So hopefully this video gives you a much better understanding of why that's so important. Because if you're paying above fair value, in the long run, you will end up on the losing side. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.